All right, episode three of the Grow and Convert YouTube channel. Um, we have a good one. You tweeted out about asking for ideas earlier um, or a while ago, and Elliot Davidson had a good idea, and we're going to do it on this channel about starting off, like how, how to build initial content strategy for the first couple of months. So why don't you share Yeah, that. here's specifically what he said. So I tweeted out, what, a week ago, suggestions for new topics so again if you're watching this and you have a suggestion for a new topic just feel free to tweet at david shirai and we'll take it into consideration but we thought the one that elliot did was pretty good here so what are your go-to posts you know straight out of the gate will help start lead generation for a new client even better if they have no dr for the purposes of this conversation Ooh, this is kind of interesting we can talk through what we do a little bit there i.e. founder's story backed in with pain points, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see here, Tag Davish said it was a good topic, so we can cover it here. Then what we did today was we also went back to Twitter and we wanted to get suggestions on companies that we should case study. So we're going to case study the first two people that responded to us. Oops, sorry, wrong tab here. Are you able to see the right tab, Davish? Uh, not, no, me... this is still the suggestions for topics. Okay. Sorry. Let me fix this really quickly. Cause then we'll show you the companies that we're going to talk through. All right. Here's the right one. All right. So yes. So now you can see my tweet from 37 minutes ago. Wanted to get a few companies that we're going to case study. So. We're going to do two different ones. Uh, one is Elliot's 3PL service, uh, Parcel Master. And the other was Joel's. Let me see where it is. Here we go. We're going to do a case study, buddy, uh, for our friend Joel here. So let's dive in. Which one do you want to start with, Davish? Let's start with Elliot's. He did suggest it. Which okay. he indicated. He did suggest us. <laughs> we can start with this. Um, we okay. while you're pulling up the site, I can explain to everyone. So I, I don't even know what Parcel Master is. Like Elliot literally just tweeted this, and we we tweeted all of this beforehand. Um, but three PLs. It's like e-commerce. Just a quick thing so that people don't have to like do a bunch of research while they t understand this video. Basically, just think of it as like a fulfillment service for e-commerce companies, right? Like nowadays, there's like a million and one D2C, direct-to-consumer e-commerce brands started by everyone. Not all of them have their own warehouses. That would be ridiculous and expensive. And so instead, they like rent space, basically, or like pay other people for warehousing facilities. Not just the warehouse, but also the actual like shipping. That's why they call these like, you know, it says fulfillment. And the video is actually pretty explanatory. Um, yeah, so I don't know what you would call this. It's not really SaaS. It's like actual physical business. business but yeah, it it is a service. But from for the purposes of the content strategy, I think it it does mimic what we would do for a SaaS company. Oh yeah, I mean, heck, we do the same thing for a SaaS company as non SaaS, kind of with some asterisks. I mean, I can start with just a high level of how we approach this, regardless of the company, regardless of parcel master. I mean, in general, you know, how did Elliot phrase his question? Like, what are the go-to things? I'm going to leave aside the low DR situation for a second, right? Anyone who's followed Glow and Convert knows that a large part of what we do is ranking for these bottom of the funnel keywords. But the other part of the tweet was like, go-to content for lead generation. So obviously, if you've not read Pain Point SEO, it's our foundational piece, you should read it. Our go-to way to do lead generation is to rank for keywords that uh, have a large buying intent. So the first bucket that I'm immediately looking at is what are the absolute no brainer, like this is the category name keywords that someone's Googling for this, right? So that's like Do you think for the one. purpose like, of, the, of the video, we should even back up one step farther and talk about what we would do to just understand this business if we were engaging in a service? Because I think, what we're going to do for the purpose of, the, of this exercise is a very quick version, just looking at the website, but there's nuances to the business that would come out uh, when we talk to different people in the, the company and things that we're trying to figure out in 
our kickoff or when we talk to different members in the company is what is the unique selling proposition or what is the competitive advantage of the company? Because sometimes that can, uh, that can lead into different keywords that would be really good for the company to go after, especially right in the beginning of the engagement. Uh, yeah, who, I mean, uh, who are I'll they servicing? Asterisk. Go ahead. So I'll asterisk this. So sure, we can do that. But let me pull up Painpoint SEO and, uh, oh, looks like it's already open in a tab. Is that like a big stereotype that we just, you and I both just have Painpoint SEO open in a tab at all times? Can you pull it up since you're the one sharing your screen? Oh, here, I can sure. share. So in this piece, you list out these five types. Um, I actually consider one and three kind of the same category, but I think what you're saying is, should we talk about the kickoff interviews and stuff we do to understand the nuances of the company, the, the customers and the pain points is yes, of course. Like we do that for a reason, but in my mind that Yes, that helps elucidate keywords in any of these buckets, but primarily this, right? Which is like the real pain point bucket, like the the types well, of pieces. Let, let that... me explain why I said that question or even why, why I went there. Because in a heavily commoditized space, such as a 3PL, I would want to know what's different about this 3PL service than any other 3PL out there. So for example, do they focus specifically on startup companies? Do they help larger companies? Are they only focused on enterprise? Because I think from a keyword perspective, even us trying to back into some of these best and product lists and that kind of stuff, or even the comparisons, that that would let us know, should we be comparing this service to a 3PL company like ShipBob? Or are there smaller players that they would compete against? Mm. Or are they focusing on startups? Or are they focusing on enterprises? And and I think that because Elliot asked it in a way where he said, what what is going to get leads in those first three months? And what is that keyword strategy? And what is the um, how are you going to approach different topics? I, I think that first three months, we would try to be very specific on the keywords that we went after. And, and I think some of that information from the kickoff would help uh, us choose which of those keywords we would start with. Yeah, okay, that's fair, I agree. So essentially what you're saying is like, back, back to the, I guess the tab that I was sharing here, like, yeah, you're saying, Davish, yes, you can go after, like what I was gonna say is, well, it's like e-commerce fulfillment. So like, aren't there just obvious keywords that are like extremely bottom of the funnel, like e-commerce fulfillment company, 3PL company, 3PL companies, like whatever. And you're saying yes, but in particular, the way Elliot asked it, like low DR means if you're really trying to get leads at the beginning, you need to factor in like likelihood of ranking and then also like differentiation because that increases likelihood of converting. And you're going to be better on both of those categories if you pick keywords that have some additional layers to it that's more specific and that your company like uniquely excels at. Great comment. Correct. Absolutely agree. Um, let me share my screen really quickly and then we can go back to pain point SEO because I think this will help. Uh, touch on what I was just talking about. So if we go, I, I actually asked a follow-up question to Elliot because I just wanted to understand this business a little bit more. So I asked him who he serves and what the unique selling proposition is because he mentioned Ship Bob in uh, his tweet. So he just mm -hmm. said, having dug into the reviews, um, here are the, the weaknesses from some of the other companies. So sometimes long dispatch times, customer service is poor and not catering to new startups. And so again, this point right here that the other companies don't cater to new startups, but his service does might shine light on some of the keywords that we want to target in the very beginning of an engagement. Uh, I'll so give an example, right? Cause you, we're not you know what you, I know what you mean, but like uh, other people okay. listening might not. So I think what you mean, not catering to yeah, new startups so is like what I, so if I was to search for, are you seeing what I'm searching for the, by the way? Nope. Still the Twitter tag. Okay. 
Sorry, working out some technical issues with this product. All right. I mean, while you pull it up, I think just to to keep the zoom out for a second, there's going to be two things I think we're going to talk about here, right? Like we're all still on number one, which is find the SEO keywords that we think are extremely bottom of the funnel, that it's like, we absolutely have to rank for this. And you added an important, I don't know, disclaimer to it, which is, and if you're really starting at the beginning and you like, you want to rank it, don't, Yes, you may be able to do just like the obvious category keyword, best e-commerce fulfillment services, like one of the bubbles you're showing now in Google Suggested Search, the top left one. Mm -hmm. But you may be better served from both a rankability perspective. Oh, no, I wish you kept sharing that. From both a rankability perspective and a conversion perspective to do something slightly more specific, which is the second one, which is fulfillment services for startups. It's going to be easier to rank, less competition, and if we're just going to assume for a second that this company has some actual, like, genuinely good differentiators, or if you do, then it's going to be even better from a conversion perspective when someone reads the article. But that's bucket one, where let's finish talking about that, then we're going to talk about bucket two, which is a non-SEO article approach we do at the beginning. All right, should we keep talking about these, brainstorm this? I I sort of cut you off and stole your thunder here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, no, all good. So if we just go back to that point that you're talking about here. So these are the frameworks that we typically lead with. So again, I think it's important to know if we're comparing our, uh, this company to a larger competitor, uh, that might be something that we lead with. These alternative posts might be something that we lead with. And so in, in Elliot's Twitter response, he did mention ShipBob is, is a key competitor here. So we might lead with a post that does alternatives to ship bob alternatives then we want to yeah ship bob alternatives uh and then we typically like these to start with so best product or service list and here's some, an example uh so if someone was searching for best e-commerce fulfillment services this would definitely be a, a keyword that we would want to own here so you can and see this Shopify is what i meant currently like, owns the be- before snippet. you added the disclaimer this is what i was talking about it's keywords like this like you don't, like like my pushback is like how much interviewing or like research do you need to do to know that this company should rank should should go after best e-commerce fulfillment services i would argue zero for sure okay but my pushback to your pushback would be <laughs> if, if you especially with with Elliot's question of starting from zero that this more specific keyword is probably going to be better for conversion if he's saying a lot of the big three PLs don't even deal with startups. And so if you had gone to this, if you had already searched for best e-commerce fulfillment services, maybe you reached out to a couple of these companies, you realize that these are either way out of your price range or they're not even gonna take you as a company because you're too small. And then you're now looking for fulfillment services for startups because that more defines uh, the type of e-commerce business you are. From Elliot's standpoint, I feel like this would be a better keyword to try to rank for initially. One, because it's probably going to be less competitive than just this main category keyword. And two, because it more fits the market that he's going after. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Um, Um, Do we want to talk about the disruption story now? No. I mean, I think think just a little bit more on just the SEO side. Like, I, I cut you off and we did this kind of back and forth on this, but like, I think you were going somewhere important, sure. which is what do we do at the beginning to elucidate more of these keywords? Like we happen to exchange one tweet with Elliot about this. So we know the startup angle and, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you want to talk about that? Like our kickoff calls and what we ask and who we ask it to and, and, and how we sort of get these. Sure. Um, yeah. So in, in the very beginning of an engagement, we typically like to talk to people who are on the sales side of things. So whoever's running sales is typically a good one, account executives, even the people prospecting into accounts to understand um, who are some of the, the customers that have closed recently, who are some of the people that they've talked to that haven't closed and why, uh, what is what unique selling proposition do people um, latch onto in sales calls? What are some of the objections that some of the salespeople, or sorry, some of the prospects push back with when the salesperson gives their pitch? 
And a lot of this information just helps us understand the mindset of a customer, who the customer views as alternative companies that can do the same thing as your business. And then also on top of that, actually, I think that's pretty much it. No, I mean, that's pretty you exhaustive. Have anything else? I, I think that's pretty exhaustive. Yeah. I think in general, I think if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, you guys have said a lot and we're still on this first bucket, like, what should I do? I think simply think of the first bucket as find like these, what we're calling extremely bottom of the funnel keywords, but try to find ones that include some qualifying terms that pair well with unique strengths of yours. So like, yes, you can have one of your first keywords just be the equivalent of this thing going after e-commerce fulfillment services. It'll probably have way higher search volume. That should be a separate video, by the way, to talk about our whole mini volume approach, but it'll have high no. search volume than whatever you found fulfillment services for startups. But if you're talking about initially, like you can go after that eventually, but it's initially like find the find do the startup version, whatever that is for your company, right? So just to like generalize, if you're doing, I don't know, some like accounting software, but it's like accounting software for entrepreneurs or like accounting software for this and that, for like shipping companies or something like that, then do that specific one first because it's gonna have less SEO competition and you're gonna get a higher conversion rate because you have some unique you know, things, differentiators to put into the body of the post. That's bucket one. And to, if you're working for, I don't know, you're an empl an employer, if you're the founder, you know, and you're talking and you're listening to this and you're trying to do this for your own business, you should not have to think hard or do a lot of interviews. You should have done the sales already. You should know your customers already. This should just like come to you, right? These specific um, iterations of these keywords. But if you're working with clients, or you're even just starting a new job, then it's what Benji said is like, talk to sales and get as much of an understanding of the customer psychology as possible. What are they coming for? Who else did they try, et cetera. And that's gonna elucidate those second layers to add to that keyword. That's bucket one. Yeah, and, and what I'm doing in the background here, uh, I'm just trying to go through the site to try to understand beyond just these really high level keywords that describe the category of services. So fulfillment services for startups, what are some of the other features of this business or use cases that the service would solve for? Because that would also uh, bring us to, to different keywords that maybe fulfillment center or fulfillment services for startups. Okay, that's the broader keyword, but are there other specific things that is unique to Parcel Master, such as pick and pack? I was trying to figure out what this is. So again, I'm not I'm not super familiar in the e-commerce space. I don't have a ton of background with 3PL. And if I did, I'm sure I could come up with more specific keywords here. But what I'm trying to do is just go through the site. And if, if you're a founder, if you're a marketer in your own company, try to think of different use cases or different features that customers come in for that is unique to your business that would also be other good keywords to go after. And so what I was doing here in the background while Davish was talking was trying to figure out is pick and pack. One, is that language something that someone would search for? Um, is that a, a key feature or something that uh, parcel master here does that ship Bob doesn't do, or maybe they have some unique way of doing it and doing it better, or maybe they handle lower volumes. Whereas uh, ship Bob only does this with, with higher volumes. And so I saw that stick out here. So even something like low volume pick and pack mm. service or something like that might be super a good. keyword that I would want to, would want to target because again, if that's a competitive advantage, whereas all the other three PLs focus on only high volume, large companies, and you've created this parcel master service just to go after those startups and really help those small businesses. And again, someone had a need for this, then this would be a really good keyword for you guys, for you to own because again, your competitors don't do this, but you have a service that is specific to this. And so yeah, that's I mean, kind of what I was doing by going through services here. I, I think maybe going to the case study buddy example would probably help because it's a business that's a little bit farther along than Parcel Master. I know Elliot said he's just starting this business. 
So I think there's probably more of those different keywords that we can go after other than just case study writing service or something like that. Did you have anything yeah. you wanted to cover here before we move on? No, I wanted to make a quick mention of when you then go after these more specific keywords that align with, um, you know, the strengths of your business. The other thing that we're not really going to cover in detail in this video is that I'll do not in detail quickly is you got to sell the crap out of those differentiators in the post, like sell it. Now, maybe that's its own video later, but this whole common thing that I'm going to like roll my eyes at in content marketing of just like add value, don't sell. If you add enough value, they're magically going to buy. Like that doesn't apply here. They're Googling something where they're looking to buy. Like what, what did you just find? E-commerce, e low volume, pick and pack service. Like that person does yeah. not need to be nurtured. They know exactly what they want and they just Googled that thing. And so if you have built an e-commerce fulfillment service with whatever the heck pick and pack is, and it's specialized for low volume, talk about exactly why that's true. Like here are the differences in high volume e-commerce fulfillment versus low volume. Here's why it's really hard for small e-commerce companies with early low volumes to use one of the other three PLs. Here are the issues. We understand that. Here's how we built ours to solve that. It has this, it has that, it has this. Like, yes, it's gonna come across as a super salesy blog post. That's the point. That's literally what they're looking for. If you are Googling something that specific, Think about your own life. Think about a B2C term, like some consumer thing you're looking for, some super specific thing, right? Th then you, you would love for a company who specialized in doing solving that problem or building that thing or selling that product to give you their best foot forward. Like, here's exactly how we addressed it. We get that pain point extremely well. This is what we're doing blah, blah, blah. Like, here's how it is. Here's why it's a, like, you're smart enough to know that's a sales pitch. I, I think I'm ranting for a little bit, but whatever. I think that that's this whole content marketing ethos of like, don't sell, don't sell in some ways it, it's, it's positioned as respecting the customer because like, give them value. They'll decide. I actually think to some extent, if it's overdone, it disrespects the customer because it treats them as stupid, okay. as though you don't know that a company is selling. Like a lot of clients do that. They're like, oh, should we do a list post with ourselves in it? Uh, because, you know, the, it's on our site. It's like, yeah, they're smart enough to know that the company's talking about itself. Also, there's yeah, times just when you Google it. some. Yeah. And like you Google something, go to some simple B2C thing that we all buy. I don't know, like men's shoes. Like I'm looking for running shoes, men's best men's running shoes. And I get on a site with Adidas and Adidas talks about why it's running shoe is the best. I'm not like offended. Like, of course, Adidas is like, give me your best sales pitch. I'm smart enough to then go to Nike and go to whoever else is on page one and do my own comparison shopping. And so you, it's, that's your turn to give your best sales pitch. They'll figure it out. They're, they're not stupid. They don't think you're duping them. That's literally what they're looking for. Okay, end of my rant. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I actually want to keep pushing on that because I think it's important because I think one of the pushbacks that we've heard lately has been, well, I don't, I don't want to do an SEO strategy because if I own some of these keywords, a lot of the results aren't interesting. I can't produce like interesting content around a, a keyword like, best e-commerce fulfillment centers. There's nothing unique about what I would write in the blog mm. post itself. It's just going to be another list post. What, what would you say to that? How could you bring either the personality or the company or that unique selling proposition into a blog post like that? That is one of these more utilitarian keywords. If you're writing a blog post for a keyword that like describes what your company is or some aspect of your product, and you don't think you have anything interesting to say, like you should not be in that business. <laughs> like I, ha I built an e-commerce fulfillment company and I'm, and then you're like, Oh, right for e-commerce fulfillment companies, like for that keyword. And you're like, well, I don't have anything to say. Then why did you build that company? Like you, you you're not doing anything innovative. You're not changing any, there's no reason why you think you're better and there should be. And then tell that story. And you can back it up with case studies. Like a lot of the objections you're talking about, 
is people are like, well, we have all these interesting stories and case studies. Yeah, put it in those. Now, it doesn't mean the whole post is that. That's not really what they're Googling for. But you can allude to it. You can give a snippet of it, maybe link to some longer story. But then maybe this is a good segue into the disruption story thing. But in these posts, you can and should talk about what makes you different. And in fact, mind you, you could we could pull up if we had time, I don't know, uh, some of the recent posts that Cam has done for Grow and Convert on uh, B, like content marketing agencies, content marketing, B2B content marketing agencies. In fact, I'm, yeah. I'm set to edit another one after this, after we record this, um, SaaS content agency or something. And so we're going after these keywords finally. Um, and we, like, we don't find those boring. We say all of this passionate stuff and opinions we have on content marketing and how to do it well and SEO and pain point SEO, we put that in the post. And so we don't, I think, I think again, you're right to, to link that to my previous rant. I think the idea that that's going to be boring comes from this idea that if you write for that post, you, you don't sell your own stuff too much. And you just do this very vanilla, like list post at what is e-commerce fulfillment. E-commerce fulfillment is this. It works like this. There are 10 companies these days. Everybody is buying things online. <laughs> you're like, right? It's like that. They think that you're supposed to do that. Um, but no, you should just sell yourself and actually have something interesting to say. All right. I will give you two options. Either we can go directly to case study buddy and just go through the content strategy for that, or we can pull up the disruption story examples. I have both of them up. No, so we should do disruption you. story to, to finish this parcel okay. master. So bucket two cool. is totally non SEO in terms of early content that we often do. Not always, but often for our clients. And we've started calling it a disruption story. We used to call it the founding story, but that sometimes got a little bit too historical. And what that is, is a post that is not targeting any keyword. It's meant exclusively for promotion on social media, both organic and what we primarily do paid social promotion. And if the, like the founders have social clout, they should share it, email list, etc. And it tells exactly what we are calling this that's the disruption story, AKA what we were just talking about of what you should put into the SEO pieces to make it interesting. But it tells just that story with no SEO angle. What problems did we notice in this space and why did we create this company and what is it disrupting? What is it changing? What is it doing better? And how is it solving those, um, those problems? And so here is an example from one of our clients, Rainforest, which makes a QA software for people who QA, it, it makes a QA software for people who QA software. <laughs> but <laughs> its key difference is that most quality assurance or QAing software is itself like coding based. Highly technical. You yeah. Yeah. You code the script that then like goes through a series of actions on your website or your app and checks for certain things to happen at each action. Like click this button, did the product actually add to cart? And you code that. Rainforest is visual. I think if you scroll down enough, you'll, you can show an actual screen. Yeah, it'll get visual. there. But I, I think th this, this part's important here. So just even the setup of this blog post, many software companies have no formal QA strategy. And those that do take one of two flawed approaches. Ask developers to do QA or delegate it to a siloed team. And then, so again, you're setting up the problem here that they noticed in the industry. And we've learned that both approaches are flawed. And in this post, we're going to explain what we do differently, all that kind of stuff. So again, setting up the problem, explaining why the product exists, why the company exists. So here's the problems again. Developers aren't incentivized to prioritize QA. Developers' job satisfaction goes down when they're in charge of QA. So again, main problem is is an organizational problem, which is when companies build software, the developers are char are in charge of QA instead of having a QA testing team or other people inside of the organization doing QA, and then they're not incentivized to prioritize it. And then it explains again more of these different problems, and then it talks through the solution put QA in the hands of people that are responsible for the business outcomes with no code. So a less technical solution focused on automated testing or anyone in the organization can be uh, involved in QA, specifically product people and other people that are uh, 
in charge of releasing the software. Do you have anything else you want to say about the disruption story or the setup? No, I mean, I think, uh, yes, <laughs> by no, I mean, yes. Um, I think the the key to this one is make the title and the intro and, and just kind of the, the angle and setup of it as interesting and click worthy as possible because the whole point of this and the way this is going to be distributed is not through SEO. So you don't have the advantage of knowing that the reader just Googled what this is about. You, this needs to now capture the attention of someone who's scrolling Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, um, or, or gets it in yeah. their email inbox. And so it has to be interesting. And so other ones that come to mind that we've done, and then we can talk about this. For I can share master. even our own, our own example too, if you want. Yeah. Just, I mean, we can share this, but like, I don't think when we correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think when we tw share this or do Twitter ads to it, we use that exact title, why we set out to build the best content marketing agency. Cause this, we actually, uh, kind of mangled. Tried. We try, we tried, tried to, to optimize both. it around a keyword. Yeah. Yeah. We tried to do both and it was done a while I'm ago before a lot of this became clear to us. Um, yeah. But what yeah, we but would I, do I do want to say Twitter a couple other things about these. Just... Go ahead. Finish your thought. Well, what we would do on Twitter, like titles and stuff, just like brainstorming. And I guess you know the actual titles. You look at the ads more than I do. But it's like things like most content marketing. I mean, I guess this, I'm just going to reiterate our homepage headline. But like <laughs> you would say things like that. Like most content marketing doesn't Most content teams. marketing agencies don't. Yeah, don't don't measure results. Here's what we're doing differently. Doesn't generate leads. Here's what we're doing differently. We would, we would take that more controversial title, opinionated title, and bring that into these pieces. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on really quickly is just other ways that these pieces can be used outside of social promotion. Um, they can be used by the sales team to sell, uh, send a prospects because now you have a very succinct piece that really sells the whole story of your company and why you exist. And so if you know the value props and you know the problems in your space really well, this piece should really resonate with people when they read it. It can also be linked to from other pieces. So for example, even that other piece that we did or the, the other keyword that we went after, the best e-commerce fulfillment companies, then imagine you had a, a, a piece like this a disruption story saying all other, uh, most three PLs fail at this, we do this differently. And then you linked to that in that blog post. And you said, if you wanted to, to see why we're different than most of the other three PL companies, click here to read our full story. Now you have a piece that again, it shares your value props and all that kind of stuff. And so these are just some of the ways that we use this type of piece and doing this at the very beginning of an engagement with, with a client also allows us to really understand the product in depth, because if we nail this piece and the company edits it and we come to an agreement on the value props uh, together, then we have a very good understanding mm. of the key points that need to go in all pieces yeah. going forward. And so this is why we typically lead with one of these uh, blog posts. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. It helps solidify those, um, some client case, disruption stories that come to mind. So you have some more examples. Well, so continuing with parcel master, it sounds like, yeah, they're just with a little that we know about it. So we're just going to make it up disruption story ideas for parcel master based on the Twitter exchange would be things like, um, you know, you could, you could have one be a little founder story ish. Like most three PLs are designed for only big companies. Like we were tired of that. And you know, this is why we built a three PL for early stage, like D to C e-commerce or something. Obviously that's like, I, I know, I know Elliot, Elliot's, Elliot's story too, is that he was pre he, I think he previously had an e-com company and it, so I think even on his headline, it said three PL created by an e-commerce owner. And I think yeah. that's probably a good hook too, is just, yeah. we, we started an e-commerce business and realized this is what was missing from a three PL. I know that's a really long title, but something to that effect where you can relate to the founder and say, look, I'm on your same level and here's the problems that we noticed with other 3PL solutions.
And that structure of writing these is really important. Like every single one that we do is pain points, like starts with that. It has, the disruption story framework has to start with that. Like these are the issues we noticed. The other one that came to mind is our current client vocal video, which has this really cool product on like creating these testimonial videos with no video crew. You like send customers a link and just using their iPhone or like their, their, you know, computer thing, they can like record this video and then it comes and you can like easily edit it without editing software. It's like pretty cool. And the disruption story there is about how the founders like tried all these things to create these marketing videos. And it was really like a crappy experience. And we they hired these expensive film crews. They flew someone to Australia from the U S and it was like ridiculously expensive. They tried like iPhone at a conference and there was all this background noise. And so that structurally you, you have to start these with a pain point and then present your solution because the pain points help you get on the same page. Again, the person reading this is not Googled anything. So you, the title is the initial hook. The first line is the hook after that, then intro. And then maybe the first section is like the pain points. Have you have them in the palm of your hand being like, we get each other, right? Like I get you, I know exactly what you're experiencing. And if that happens, like game over, then they're ready for whatever solution you present. If that pain point resonates. Okay, study buddy, let's do it. All right, let's do it. I think this is going to be an easier uh, example to understand here. So case study buddy, they do B2B case studies in, in different ways. So they primarily do written case studies. So the case studies that you would put on your website, I think like, yeah, case study with a company and an image of a person. And then their whole story about uh, how they worked with the business, they produce those, they do them really well heard a lot of great feedback from people who've used them. Then they also do these video testimonials. So they help produce video content remote or on location. So think like the highly produced video testimonials where someone's sitting with a blank background and explaining why they love a product or company. They also help with those and they can do them remote remotely as well. So what would we do in the first three months with a company like this? I, I think, since we just ended on disruption stories, I think doing a disruption story here would be a really great way to start off the engagement. So what you could do with this business is explain why people have trouble producing case studies on their own. If that's the main person or if that's the main problem that you're selling against, I don't, I don't think case study buddy from what I know of them sells against too many other case study services. It's mainly against someone internally producing case studies and they need help with writing, or maybe they they just don't think that they're effective at producing these. They want a partner who can help them create these. They're going to turn to case study buddy. So the disruption story here would be telling that story about why they created this service, what they do differently, how they either extract this information from companies better than anyone else, write the stories better than anyone else, uh, produce the finished product better than anyone else. But essentially just tell that whole story about the why behind they, them creating this product. And then what is the solution to the company's problem when they're creating case studies? Next, I, if we're thinking back to that pain point SEO post and those five frameworks, I'm trying to figure out what would be the best like parent term or category term to go after first. Uh, so there's a few different examples here, but I'm going to just keep going just best case study writing service. So again, I'm just, we don't have the nuanced information about who their best customers are, the unique selling proposition, when people buy and all that kind of stuff. I'm just kind of going off of the main tabs here. So seems like the core service is written case studies. The second core service is video testimonials. So based off of that, I want to do some keyword research and try to figure out uh, what keywords Joel should go after here. So case study writing service, and we can even take best off of here just to look at the main keyword. Look at how many people are bidding against this on the paid side. If case study buddy could own this organically, it looks like this company case study writing service does. I don't know if they are a competitor to Joel or if they do something slightly different, but this would definitely be a keyword that I want to own. If someone's searching for case study writing service, 
it indicates that they would be a really great fit for someone who does written case studies. And they're looking for someone to take this off the plate, which the service aspect of this keyword indicates. Now, this is something that I also like to do. If we just go through suggested search and hover over this, you can see other clarifiers here. So they want someone that can help them virtually or online and not in person. Well, that would be another keyword that I would want to own because Case Study Buddy does help people virtually and, and they have a remote aspect to their business. If we kept going down this list, oops, sorry, this list. Professional case study writers, completely different keyword here. And you can see here, I think this is a key thing to point out. How would we determine if, let's say, going back to this keyword, if it was worth it to create a separate blog post or a separate page on the site to go after case study service versus case study service online versus business case study writing services versus professional case study writers. We would look at the search results here and see if there was a lot of overlap in what shows up for these different queries here. So professional case study writers, if you don't remember, I'll just go back to this, has very different search results showing up than professional case study writers. So we would probably go after both of these different keywords and we'd probably have a preference around trying to go after the case study writing service or writing service online or best case study writing service first, and then loop back to something like professional case studies writers a little bit later in the engagement, maybe two or three months down the line, just because this has slightly lesser intent. Someone might be wanting to search for a freelance writer versus an agency that does this. But again, the freelancer and agencies can somewhat be interchangeable. And so this would still be a good, a good one to own. Let's see here. What else comes up? B2B case studies. So another thing, another keyword that stuck out to me on their site was just B2B. That's who they're specific to. So I would want to see if there's other clarifiers in here SAS, that maybe. would bring in just only those people. Oh, that's a good one too. SAS, SAS case study. Software as a service case study. SaaS case study service. Side note on one of the keywords that looks Ooh, like this. I really. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a good one. No, I was going to do a total aside, like on that first one. The case study, apparently, case study writing service or whatever. It's also, there's like a side intent of writing, helping write like school case study essays. So just be mindful of that, right? I think best. Yeah. And I think that's to, to that point, I think that's why we like to be as specific as possible. So yeah. Yeah. If you can include the word B2B in here and instead of just B2B case studies, which could also be interesting for, to, for Joel to own here, even though you see the intent is slightly different than a service to me, the intent here is either examples of good ones, how to write them a process for creating them. Well, this, so this is some of that cross. I think some, some level of this is like people in business school, like you saw the scholarly articles for some of that is like, so there's some cross intent of people being like, I just want examples of like cool business case studies of like B2B businesses that I don't know, like that, that guy can be used in some like MBA class or whatever, but that's okay. Like, that's fine. Just look on the SERP. And if there's some level of intent you think for your use case, which in this case is like, I want examples of B2B case studies that other businesses have written about their customers so that I can imitate that. Therefore indicating that I'm in the market for something like case study buddy. If there's like a few pieces on the SERP for it, I would probably go after it. Maybe not the first keyword, but at some point. Yeah. So, I know we've talked a lot about the, the high level pain point SEO strategy. So those best customer or the best category keywords, alternative keywords, we haven't gone into some of the more specific real pain point SEO use cases or examples. So this would be one of them here, how to write a B2B case study. Again, if you're searching for this, you probably have a need to write one of these. 
And maybe you might be willing to use a service like Case Study Buddy to to do this because you realize after reading an article like this, this seems very complicated or case study buddy just has a, such a better process. I should just probably use them. So if I was doing this blog post for case study buddy, I would probably share their own internal, not, not like the own internal process behind the scenes, but more of the public facing process that they use that allows them to get these case studies that are a notch better than anyone else. And so in these, I'm guessing a lot of these blog posts are really generic. Like, let's go through these. <laughs> you are too busy doing the actual work. So how to write them? Problem, solution, results, customer. Again, super high level, doesn't really say anything. Do a question and answer with a customer. With so this, this blog post. They probably took that photo. Yeah, also. this, the structure. Oh, have a headline. What is the case study about? <laughs> Again, like most of these blog posts that are written the on results. any of these subjects are just so bad. They're so bad. They don't even say anything unique. They don't like what all this is obvious. How no, a call to part, action the in your case the study. Results. The results says the result. again, detail is crucial. Perhaps you should have included detail in your own post. <laughs> Facts and figures are the best. If you don't have results in a case study, what are you even doing? Like, <laughs> oh, how is this, I didn't realize how is that this I should advice? include. Yeah, I didn't realize I should include results in my case study until I wrote, read your profound blog post. So again, if you have a service like Case Study Buddy and you've been doing this for a long time, you should be able to write a much better blog post ar around how to write B2B case studies. And it should be very clear to the reader that you actually know what you're talking about here because you have some unique process that you've created over a period of years doing this for clients. And you have a lot more nuance in your blog posts around maybe challenges of scheduling interviews with the company that, that you're trying to do the interview with, how to ask good questions in the interview, how to structure the, the case study that is far and away better than just this headline results, whatever structure that they had in here. And so I do think that this is a valid keyword to go after and, and probably a good one to go after. Um, that is more, I would say the pain point SEO, it's not going to be as high converting as someone looking for a service, but it's definitely something that I would test in the first few months of an engagement to, to see if it converts or not. Other, other things that are even a little bit more middle of the funnel, and even people could say this is more top of the funnel, but I actually think I, I can argue this is more middle of the funnel because I think if you're going to go write a case study or you've been tasked with producing them, you want to go look for examples of case studies that are good that you can emulate. And so I would argue that if you were to rank for B2B, or B2B case study examples, again, focusing on this specific customer and, and then showing examples, you could actually just show the finished product of all your great client, all the great client works and say, here are all the examples of case studies that we've produced at case study buddy. You could even weave some of the, here's how we produce it in here. And I think that would likely convince someone to work with you and that you clearly know what you're doing and have a CTA. If, if you're, if you need to produce a case study and you don't want to write it yourself, try case study, buddy, something like that in your blog post. Yeah. I, I mean, and I would, even in the example posts, I would mention the process and the differentiation because you say, here are our examples, but how did we create those? It's not just by chance. It's not by doing what everyone else did. They're created via our process and here are links to it, et cetera. Um, let's do this for both this and um, parcel master. Let's now distill this into like, what would be the first three posts? I can go first on parcel master. I would probably sure. do, I would probably do a disruption story at the beginning. Elliot mentioned like extremely low DR. So you need something while SEO is like taking time to pick up. Then I would do one of your super specific um, SEO posts, like really specific if you're low DR, like whatever that last yeah, one like was. Yeah, like that, that low pick volume pick and, pick and, pick and pack. Pick and, pick and pack. <laughs> pick and pop. Yeah. Pick and, <laughs> that pick and pop is a basketball move. Pick and, and pack. And, it, and again, even in the, even in the first 
three months of an engagement or even in the first month, even if that had no, let's say search volume for it. And we knew that that was a big pain point that the business solved for. We would still go after that even in the first few months, because we know just one conversion there or two or three or five conversions is pretty meaningful for that. And if no one else is talking about their service in that way, that's still a really valuable keyword to own. And especially with Elliot's example of saying that there's very low DR, if no one else is competing for that term, you're even with low DR, you're probably going to rank for that. And so that's, that's, a, that's an even better reason why we might go after it in the first three months is because we can show some early wins with something ranking very quickly. And also because we're going after a keyword that no one has really even thought about going after because there's no volume around it. Yeah. I, I, I have a rant that I wanted to say for the end and I will continue to save it, but it's based on that. It's like, this is something that people need to do to actually take action. The third slot I was debating while you were saying that third slot, you could do one of two things. Um, you could either then mix in one of those like category terms that you just, you're like, maybe I don't have the domain authority and the backlink profile to ring for this now, like best e-commerce fulfillment service, but I want to lay the seeds for it. Um, and just like, get it, get that published. Or you could do a second, uh, you could do a second really specific one. And I honestly think that as I'm thinking about this, I would do a second specific one because of what you just said is like, just get wins. And so maybe that's, you know, the brief version of my rant now is like, we have a bunch of people in our course and all that sometimes I feel like they psych themselves out a little bit and even clients or prospects that talk to us where they're just like, they think content has to be some like huge thing, you know, like, well, I want to talk about this aspect of our brand and I want to talk about that aspect of our brand. And I really think, and and they say things to us like, guys, I really think we have an amazing opportunity. Like our company (laughs) is so well positioned for content. I have this vision and they have this vision of being like some example company that they follow, that they love, or they're jealous of that. They want to be like, all of that is fine. Like it's good to do that. But I, what I've seen is I feel like people psych themselves out over it. Is they're just like, they, they have this vision of perfect or ideal content marketing. And so it's so hard to take the early steps because that first piece going after some niche term, like low volume, pick and pack e-commerce fulfillment. You're like, well, that's not my like vision of us being this amazing content market. That's so boring. And then you just like don't do anything, or you try to execute this vision, but you don't have the chops for it yet. Or, and you or, don't or have- I think what you're saying is it, it only talks about one aspect of my service. I, yeah. I don't want to be considered a low volume pick and pack company. Right. Oh, that, we're going to fulfill that, what... all this other stuff too. And we're going to grow into this thing. And I have this vision of just being this data platform. Like, you know, all VC companies eventually just, <laughs> they, they're a data problem. And so like, you're like, that's fine. But in the meantime, you're not generating any leads. So what are you doing? And then they're like, well, content is not really working for us. It's like, cause you haven't done it yet for real. So like, get your early wins, get those published. Another thing is you can use this kind of three to five pieces using the framework we've talked about in this to just do your test. So there's other groups of companies that are like, well, I want to test the channel and is the channel going to work? You're like, great. You can produce five pieces, stop and come back in six months. And like, what has it done? Has it produced leads? Make sure your attribution ducks are in a row. You can check our site for attribution stuff. Google attribution site colon scoring And then, and, and, and be able to attribute it. Okay. So that's parcel master. That's my rant case study, buddy, three pieces. I, I, again, I would do a disruption story. I would do, uh, that B2B content or sorry, B2B or what was it? Case study writing service or B2B case study writing B2B service or SAS yeah. case study SAS. Ah, can't even speak right now. SaaS case study writing service. I would probably also do the how to write a B2B case study because I I do think that that gives the uh, opportunity to share the process and uniqueness about his service. Um, 
I know on his website, he had video testimonial service as well, or that was another key service. That might be another thing that I would go after. And I get that decision is probably made by, if we were doing that kickoff session, one of the questions that we would ask is how much of his business comes from written versus video. If a, a majority of it is, let's say, 70 to 80 percent is all written testimony or written case studies then we would probably focus more on those written case study keywords in the very beginning however if he said there's a 50 50 split then i would bring in one of those video testimonial service keywords or something like that yeah um request i know we're almost at an hour there was someone who replied to your tweet like instantly could we do a rapid fire on her business can we add sure, that in? Just because is? she replied so quickly, if you go to your Twitter thread, um, I could probably find it here. It is testbox.com. I haven't even evaluated it. I don't even know if it's like good. Um, I don't even see. see this uh, test box. Here, I can share it. Okay. Test and compare B2B software. Say goodbye to boring demos, trial accounts, and unnecessary qualifying accounts. Instead, get, ooh, this is going to be hard. Instead, get hands-on experience and compare the top B2B software side-by-side -side with real use cases. Maybe this will be interesting since it's going to be hard. I, I would just do a bunch of comparison keywords. So yeah. X, X software versus Y software. That would literally be the whole strategy that I would do in the very beginning. Yeah, this is not a normal one. The reason I, so if you're wondering, like, as I was halfway into reading the homepage headline and subheadline, why did I immediately say this is going to be hard? Because it was very clear early on, this is not a big existing category. Yeah. Is that fair? I have never heard yeah. of something like this. Yeah. I mean, there um, are some keywords around compare SaaS tools. So maybe that I'd want, I'd want to go after that. Yeah, um, but I agree. But to be honest, I would just probably copy the strategy of G2 or Captera. And so going after the category keyword, so best category keyword product and try to rank for that. And then whatever the uniqueness of the product is and the way that you compare them, bring that into the blog post. And then I would also just do a bunch of head to head uh, comparisons. So whatever the big softwares are that you compare on your guys' site, I would do those ones first. So whoever people are comparing the most, start with those and do X software versus Y software. And that would probably yeah. be the whole content strategy that I would lead with. All yeah, right, mic drop, we're out. One. Okay. Thank you everyone for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like it and or comment. And again, if you have any more suggestions for us in the future, please just tweet us and or email us. Thank you.